Being the only person in my household trying to change my lifestyle, it makes it hard. I get it. I know it's hard. Look, you're watching this right now. You're the only one in your family doing keto. Everyone else is eating pizza and spaghetti and eating cake and donuts and brownies. Yo, what is good everybody? Welcome back to another video. So I'm really excited about this one because I asked you guys, what is the hardest thing about the ketogenic diet? I know what the hardest thing for me was when I first started, but I wanted to know from you. So I put this question on my Instagram to you. What is the hardest thing about the ketogenic diet? And I got some pretty interesting answers. So I kind of want to go over them. Look, I didn't, I didn't read them all, but I read enough to them. I was like, you know what? I need to make a video. So, so instead of answering everybody individually and like giving like a really thought out answer, I said, you know what? What the heck? Let's do a YouTube video and let's just go. Let's just like rapid fire. The first thing on my mind, just no time to think about it. Just go. And so we're going to do that right now. But before we get into this video, guys, thank you for watching. My name is Logan Delgado. Just in case you are new, I am a proud father, a proud husband. I lost a total of 70 pounds utilizing the ketogenic diet and intermittent fasting. And I have now dedicated my life to help you, yes you, to remember that it is never too late to become what you might have been. So let's go ahead and dive into this. First answer was temptation at social gatherings. Uh, yeah, that was me. So that was one of my hardest things. So if you're new to doing the ketogenic diet, and most likely you probably have a social life, right? So you like to go out on the weekends, you like to go out, maybe your family loves to drink, like my Mexican family, my big ass Mexican family loves to drink. And so, you know, every Sunday we like to get together and someone always brings the alcohol, brings the liquor, whatever, right? So I get it, it can be tough. Now, depending on what your goals are, how like, how much you really need to lose weight, or maybe you're just doing the ketogenic diet because you need to lose a couple of pounds here and there, no big deal, right? Will determine you'll be able to give into the temptation. So I always say this, life comes first, right? It's all about making memories, your diet will come second. There are only certain times of my life where diet is number one, whether I'm like, you know, prepping for a show or I need to get ready for a photo shoot, which is always a very short time period compared to like the rest of my life. And I need to give up beer, liquor, whatever that may be. I can do that for that 10 weeks, not a problem, right? It's not like it's, I'm not gonna be able to drink for the rest of my life, and so can you. So if you go to social gatherings, just try to limit it or try to make better decisions don't go have like a very you know high calorie dark uh, beer try to stick with something light like a very light beer Michelob Ultra maybe even some of those seltzers that are very low calorie or like the best option is probably gonna be some type of liquor with water whiskey and water but do be very careful because when you do do the ketogenic diet it is very easy to get drunk so be very careful and if you are someone who needs to lose a lot of weight then just stay away from those temptation gatherings okay you just have to let go. You have to say no for this short period of your life because you have bigger plans and you have bigger goals. And so that's the best way that I can answer that question. So before we go on to the next answer, I wanna thank the sponsors of this video. Yo, so shout out to Synfit for hooking me up with the best protein. So right here we have the chocolate protein and then this is my favorite and Crystal's favorite as well. Yeah, this is the fruity cereal smoothie. I don't ever and then protein, you guys. also, <laughs> yeah, no, this is not a blueberry, you silly girl. And this is the cinnamon swirl. Guys, I love this protein. Obviously, you can hear my little girl talking, so it's all good. Um, absolutely love this protein. If you're looking for a high quality protein, then I'm telling you, you need to get the Sin Fit protein. Only two grams of fat, only one, two grams of carbs, and 25 grams of protein. Are you kidding me? 25 grams of protein? Uh, yeah, look no further than SinFit, guys. I love it. I take it every single day, post-workout, and randomly when uh, I can't ever eat, which will probably be like today because we're going to go shop furniture, so. Yeah, and definitely. if you're picky like Crystal over here, yep. this one is so bomb, you guys. It tastes like fruity pebble cereal. Exactly, like, but without so the good. sugar and the like, jump. Oh, so. I can drink this. You guys will absolutely love this, guys. So I do have a link, goodie25 to save yourself 25% off, or you can go to the link in the description below and pick you up some protein, guys. Okay, next one. I have trouble with consistency. We all do. So I guess my best answer to that would be try to come up with a game plan. Try to come up with a schedule. It's very hard to stay consistent when you have no clue what you're gonna eat for, for that day. You have nothing planned out. You have no food prep. You're just gonna wing it and just try to eat healthy on the go. 
That's never gonna work. You're just setting yourself up for failure. Same thing, you're like, oh, I do keto and I wanna work out, but don't know when I'm gonna work out. I'm just gonna go whenever I have time. Newsflash, you'll never have time. So you gotta come up with some type of a game plan, some type of a schedule, so you can food prep, or you know what you're gonna eat, you know what you need to go get the grocery store, you know what time you're gonna go work out. Those are the things that are gonna help you stay consistent. I just started and I miss sweets, so yes, when you do keto, I know a lot of us come from like a sugar addictive life, right? And so you come to keto because you want to break those sugar addictions. And I get it. It is hard, okay? Um, fortunately, there are a lot of other sugar alternates and a lot of sweet alternates that you can go with that won't spike your blood sugar, won't knock you out of ketosis, um, like monk fruit, agulose, you can choose from. I'll put a list boom, right there that you can choose from that are keto friendly and diabetic friendly. But also what you really have to understand is, do you wanna just really break free from those, craving those sweets altogether? Cause, cause let's just use this example. If you're addicted to crack and they come up with a crack alternate, right? That gives you, I guess, the same feeling of crack, but it's not technically crack, then you're truly like never breaking your, your craving or you're never really breaking your addiction, which a lot of us are all addicted to sugar. So it's better off just to cut it all together, but I get it. It is probably hard for a lot of you, especially if you're doing keto and you're new to keto, there's always better options to go with. All right, next one, this is a good one. Uh, making different meals for my family, rolling eye emojis. <laughs> I totally get it. You know, for a lot of us who do the ketogenic diet, uh, you're, you're gonna be the only one in your household doing it, right? Like, cause if you have kids, good luck trying to get kids to do keto. Good luck having your husband do it with you or your wife doing it with you, right? It's tough. So for me, the longest time when I started doing keto, my wife did not do keto. She loves pasta. She loves pizza. So here I am making my ground beef, broccoli and butter, and she's ordering Domino's pizza. And it was hard in the beginning, but I got over it. One thing you just need to like give it time and after a while it will become much easier. I understand it's gotta be a pain in the ass to cook food for only yourself, then cook all this other food that you were used to eating for your other family members. I know it's gotta be tough. One other thing that I recommend you do is try to find like a recipe, a dish that your family absolutely loves and try to find like a keto version of it and make that without telling them and see what they think and maybe they'll like it and then after they're done be like, hey, by the way, fam, that was keto. And they're like, what? That, that was keto? No way, mom, that tasted delicious. And you're like, I know keto is delicious, right? And so that is one way to go about it. Find recipes, find meals that are very similar to what they eat, uh, but make it low carb, make it keto friendly. Trust me, it's 2021, you can find options for everything that you used to eat that is now keto friendly, low carb friendly. All right, next answer, uh, feeling awful at the first couple of weeks, it's so hard to stick to, any advice? Yeah, definitely, so a lot of people have a hard time switching over from glucose to ketones as energy. You're essentially switching energy sources for your body. Your body has been running off of glucose, which is carbs, for years and the majority of your life. You're now emptying out the tank and then refilling it up with ketones slash fat as energy. So during that time period of emptying out that tank, your body's gonna feel like really weird, it's gonna be different. Some people get these really awful like feelings during that transition. Uh, best way to go about that is drink plenty of water, uh, make sure you're getting plenty of electrolytes, uh, plenty of magnesium and potassium into your body every single day so you can combat those awful feelings. It doesn't happen to everybody, so if you're watching this and you're new to keto, you're like, whoa, dude, trust me, I don't wanna feel awful. Look, it, if you can just take care of those four things, get those four things in your body, I can promise you you'll have better success. And remember, it's not gonna last forever. It's only gonna be for maybe a week or two weeks at the most. Uh, that's my best advice for that one. Miss eating most fruits. Yes, yes, I get it. Look, I'm a huge fan of watermelon. Watermelon and some Redmond Drill Salt, Dude, that is like the best freaking dessert. I can live off that. Like I freaking love watermelon, but I'll go crazy. I'll, I could probably eat a whole watermelon which is not good. Everything in moderation. You can have a little bit of it, but don't go crazy. And my best advice that I would say for someone who really misses fruit, but you wanna stick to keto is look, do it this way. If you're gonna have that fruit, have it before your workout. Have it before you go do cardio. So that way you get the benefits of it, you get to have it, it, satisfy, it satisfies that craving, but then also you're gonna then utilize that extra glucose 
into your workout. And so now then when you go work out, you will burn up through all that glycogen and you'll get right back to ketosis. So just don't eat fruit or eat something that's going to be really hard in carbs and then go sit down and watch TV. Like get moving, use that as fuel, use that as extra boost to go out, do whatever you need to do, have that fruit, then go out for a 30 minute walk outside, burn that up, then you'll be back in ketosis and back where you need to be. Okay, this is one that I always used to get in the beginning when I started keto. Uh, workouts are weak. So I'm assuming they're saying that uh, maybe when they go into the workouts now that they're doing the ketogenic diet that they don't feel that pump, they maybe feel weak. And a lot of that goes to the individual. Like, are you eating enough? Why don't you take a pre-workout? If you take a pre-workout, you'll be fine. If you get the right pre-workout, whether you do keto or you're not doing keto, um, will help out and go a long way. So I recommend taking Habit Hardcore by American Metabolics. It is a well, it says it in the title. It's a very hardcore workout, but I love it. it gets me the pump I need. Also, I highly recommend you uh, downing a teaspoon of salt. Yes, you heard me correctly. Downing a teaspoon of salt. Salt is a great vasodilator. It's gonna get you pumped. It's gonna open up those veins, blood flowing, get that nice pump. So if you can do those things, get some water, uh, a teaspoon of salt before you go work out and some pre-workout, trust me, you're not gonna feel flat, you're not gonna feel weak, and then also make sure you're eating enough food. Uh, look, I get it, it's very hard to eat a lot of food on keto because fat is so satiating, um, but you need to be eating a lot of food. You wanna get that pump, you wanna get stronger, eat in a calorie surplus. That's my best advice for that. All right, here's the other one. I mean, this is already like the third one I got. Being the only person in my household trying to change my lifestyle, it makes it hard. I get it, I know it's hard. Look, you're watching this right now. You're the only one in your family doing keto. Everyone else is eating pizza and spaghetti and eating cake and donuts and brownies. And you're the only one that wants to change and knows that they need to change their lifestyle. You cannot force anybody to eat a certain way. I have loved ones, my mom, I'll use my mom as a great example. I love my mom to death, obviously. She's my queen, right? She's done everything for my family. I can't get her to do keto. I can't get her to eat healthy. She's seen my transformation. She sees what I do for a living. I do YouTube videos helping people about their diets, about their nutrition, and she knows all the successful stories. She's been to my meetups. She's been to expos with me. She's seen people come up to me, share their story. She's been with me when I've been at the grocery store or out or whatever, and someone sees me and they're like, oh my God, you helped me lose so much weight. You inspired me to do this. She sees all that, but yet she won't make the decision on her own to clean up her eating, to eat a healthier lifestyle. There is nothing you can do, so you can't stress about it. All you can do is be the example. So if you're the only one doing keto in your family, show them. Don't tell them, show them all the benefits it's doing for you. You're getting more energy, no more brain fog, uh, reduce inflammation, you're becoming healthier, lower blood pressure, you're battling type two diabetes. All these things, all these benefits that you're getting from the ketogenic diet, and it's turning you to a better person and you're showing them that. And so they're like, wow. And then from there, they just have to make that decision. You can't force anybody to eat a certain way. I've tried. It, and it's just, you go down a downward spiral of trying to convince, and you end up like messing that relationship up with that person, right? Whether it's your mom, your spouse, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your brother, your sister, your friend, your aunt, whatever that may be. People don't like to be told how to eat. People are gonna eat the way they wanna eat, and the only way to get them to change up their lifestyle is they have to be like influenced, I guess. Or, and the only way they can be influenced is everybody's different. Like, like, and what I mean by influence, I mean their why. They have to find that why. Everybody's why is different. I knew why I chose to do the ketogenic diet. Uh, I had a personal envy, jealousy story that I've told many, many times. And if you haven't heard it, I apologize. I can't go over it today. But what sparked me to do the ketogenic diet was pretty much a foundation of envy and jealousy. And I decided to do the ketogenic diet and work out and get fit. Now look, what started off as a negative, I did not have turned into a positive, but everyone's why is different. So I know I kind of went everywhere with that answer, but it's the truth, man. You, you can't give up. If you're the only person doing it in your family, just be the example for your family. Be the example for your loved ones.